Hi peeps, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to just simply read a poem for you that I wrote years ago in 2001 and it feels, it feels more apt today than it almost did then. And I hope you enjoy it. It's a holiday poem and um, I hope you join me. I don't have a fireplace right here, not in my office, but hey, you know, uh, we can pretend. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Um, hit the bell so that you get notified when I have new videos out and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I hope you do. So yes, I wrote this poem in 2001. After the towers fell, I was a rough time for everybody who was there. Um, I had been reading a book by Janet Ivanovich, uh, one of her Stephanie um, mysteries. And I like her work, you know, it was fun. And the day the towers fell, I put it down and I didn't pick it up until six weeks later. Um, it somehow felt disrespectful to laugh or to try and find joy in something. And I think, you know, I was feeling guilt over that. I was feeling shock over what had happened. Well, then I finally one day just picked it up again. And I read it. I started reading. And I found myself laughing. And it was the first time in six weeks I had laughed. And I realized how desperately I needed that joy and how much the world needed hope and needed something to laugh at, something to enjoy. And I realized it wasn't disrespectful to those who had died. It wasn't disrespectful to try and find something joyful in life because if you lose that hope, if you lose that joy, you lose reason for living. And people, those who have gone on before us, they want us to be happy. So I write this poem <clears throat> because, you know, the solstice was coming and I wasn't sure how to celebrate when we had just been through such a major disaster. Well, now this year we have the pandemic and a lot of people, you know, over half a quarter million have died. And I've had loved ones who've been sick with it and very ill and luckily pulled through. And I'm very grateful for that, but they are suffering lingering effects. And then I've got friends who have lost loved ones to COVID. So... Again, the world is kind of in a, a dark place right now. And it just occurs to me that it's that time of year again, you know? And I'm sure there are people who are sitting there going, how do I celebrate when all this is going on? How do I pick up the pieces? And we're having to change our traditions. And it's okay to change traditions. It's okay to make things different. Sometimes we have to, but I think for continuity's sake, for the hope of bringing light and life into the world, we need to look for joy. We need to look for something to hold on to. We need to do it safely, but we need to find things that make us smile, that give us a break, because stress is so bad for the body and the last thing anybody needs right now is more compromised immune systems when a virus is going around. So I'm going to read you my poem because that's what it's all about is how do we find joy during dark times. And of course it's pagan in nature because I'm pagan. So here we go with Katie's help. A merry yuletide to all with respect to the original book. <laughs> Twas two days before Yuletide and all through the coven, 
The witches were baking sacred cakes in the oven. Astrologers were eyeing the stars for great omens. The bards were penning their stories and poems. The Norsemen were blasted on grog and on ale. The Celts hoarded mistletoe while it was on sale. The New Agers were dreaming of angels of light as the snow piled up through the long winter's night. Yuletide was coming, Yuletide was near, and all that we craved was a little good cheer. The trees sparkled with light in this season of snow. This year's gifts seemed bigger, or maybe not so. Cookies and cakes and roast hams and roast geese filled the tables with promise, the promise of feasts. Parties and dinners abounded this year, though underneath all looked the presence of tears. The rain in my town poured down cold as sleet. The skies overcast were as usual bleak. I took a deep breath and I trimmed my fake tree. I'd rather not cut down a Roman, you see. And I wondered again at how traditions brought peace and how these few baubles could make my pain cease. The year had been hard, many lives had been lost, and my heart surged with winter's white frost. I turned off the lamps and I plugged in the lights, circling the tree they were shining so bright. I curled by the fire, my cats at my feet, and listened to silence and to my heart beat. No elaborate ritual planned for Yule night. Just a few friends and my loved ones held tight. Just a few thoughts for those not as lucky as me. For those sitting alone by a morning trimmed tree. As I curled by the fire in front of my eyes, a man dressed in holly showed up by my side. What the? I asked as the cats raced down the hall. Home invasion? Freak psycho? Just a tad off the wall? He shook his head and with a chill in his eyes, sat on the sofa and gave a soft sigh. My dear, I'll save you the trouble to ask. Answers you want to give answers my task. His breath swirled with ice, his hands crackled with frost. The Holly King visiting? Perhaps he was lost? I offered him grog and I offered him cake. But neither treat would the winter king take. I knelt at his feet, questions filling my heart. How can we celebrate in times that are dark? Are we just kidding ourselves anymore? Does the mother still care? Have we outlived our lore? He put his hand on my shoulder, wiped a tear from my eye, leaned forward and whispered, tomorrow I die. Tomorrow I meet my brother and fight then descend into the long winter's night. Then why are you here? I grabbed for his hand. You are doomed, and yet you still travel the land. You bring the beauty of winter, the keen chill of ice. You're here in my home, gifting me with advice. He held tight to my fingers. He would not let go. His smile remained, his eyes clouded with snow. I bring you beauty because it's my nature and force. I travel the land, it's our lifeblood and source. I will die tomorrow. Others have died today. And not every trouble will vanish away. And not every hunger will feed. Not every tear dry. But to ignore beauty for pain is to let your soul die. He lifted my chin and whispered, listen to me. Let go of the guilt, set it loose, set it free. Be grateful for that which the goddess has sent. Help those who you can and give prayers where you can't. Don't deny yourself celebration and mirth. For the joy that you feel, to more joy it gives birth. Don't dwell on the pain, on the death, on the tears. You'll only empower more anguish and fear. And I saw what he meant, a world driven by pain, where fear ruled out courage and kept us in chains, where tears became bars of a cage holding us in, where laughter and music and joy were all sins, 
and I vowed that my magic would not build that world. And as I so vowed, the energy swirled and swooped and rose and the holly king laughed. He kissed me soundly and winked as he danced. The lights on the tree grew bright, shimmering clear. The gifts given with love no longer seemed shallow cheer. The garland smelled fresh, the rain turned to snow. Then the holly king said, I really must go. I've a battle to lose, a duty to season. And as to my death, you know there's good reason. The world cannot live in perpetual cold. Even the holly lord must fade and grow old. I reached up to his wizened face, gave him a kiss, as the room clouded over with fog and bog mist. He gave me a hug, then pulled back near the tree. And as he vanished, he was waving to me. I opened the drapes to see snow part sparkling like gems, covering the trees, every bough, needle, and limb. And I fixed myself tea and thought of the night. What a wonderful gift, the gift of clear sight. Tomorrow our friends on our home would descend, and we would be here to welcome them in. We'd eat and we'd drink, exchange gifts in the light of a fire that crackled all through the night. And we'd mourn the holly come the old high day. We'd turn the wheel in our nouveau, ancient of ways. We'd drive back the darkness with song and with mirth and welcome the sun king as the goddess gave birth. Well, our friends won't be joining us this year, this solstice, but we will be together on Zoom. And we will be doing as much as we can to make sure that next year we can gather. And we will be trying to bring joy and spread joy. And you know, that's what I do with my books. I try to spread joy. I try to give my readers a place to escape the realities around them. And sometimes those escapes can be scary and nerve wracking. But I always try to have an ending that leaves them feeling a little better than when they came into the book. So, yes, try to find some joy this holiday season. It's difficult sometimes in dark times, but joy does spread and is as contagious as depression and melancholy. So if you can find the simple joys in life, hold on to them, hold them dear, and do something for someone to spread joy in their life. And as we spread the joy out, as we spread light out into the world, it will magnify. So bright blessings. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.